Thank you, Scott. I'm delighted to present to you an effective and easy technique for management of CMC arthritis using a suture button suspension plasty. Surgery to manage basilar joint arthritis is indicated once non-surgical options no longer alleviate the patient's symptoms. There are a vast array of options once surgical intervention is considered. These include metacarpal extension osteotomies, CMC joint arthrodesis, total joint arthroplasty, and trapeziectomy with its many variations, including the ligament reconstruction and tendon interposition, or LRTI, abductor pollicis longus suspension plasties, hematoma distraction arthroplasty, and suture button suspension plasty. The only common element for all of these techniques apart from the metacarpal extension osteotomy is that the techniques include removal of the articulation at the CMC joint, either by removing bone or by arthrodesis. The most recent surveys of practicing hand surgeons in the United States suggest that LRTI is still favored in the US despite its obsolescence. Time and time again, the literature has shown us that there is no difference in outcomes. The study published in JHS reviewed the available literature and concluded that trapeziectomy with ligament reconstruction or trapeziectomy with ligament reconstruction and tendon interposition is not superior to any of the other techniques. And this Cochrane review, which is updated every few years, continues to conclude that they are unable to demonstrate that any technique confers a benefit over any other technique in terms of pain and physical function. There are very few randomized controlled trials evaluating these techniques, and those that have been published suffer from weaknesses, including being underpowered, lacking patient reported outcomes, or having sufficient long-term follow-up. Although no technique has been shown to be superior based on outcomes, there are some differences in the downsides of these procedures, which do confer some su superiority, I think, uh, for some of the techniques. This study reviewed the costs associated with the techniques for management of CMC arthritis. Uh, because of its complexity, it's not surprising that LRTI is the most expensive procedure. It is more complicated, it takes longer, and it requires more resources. But there are also associated higher risk of complications than for the simpler procedures. For the LRTI, there is a known morbidity associated with the autograft harvest, and these include things like palmar cutaneous branch of the median nerve dysfunction, a sensation of pulling along the flexor carpi radialis, but this study also showed that there were higher risk of all complications for LRTI, including major complications, including infections requiring antibiotics, reoperation, and CRPS, as well as minor complications, including things like transient paresthesias, sensitive scars, and prolonged swelling. There are, in fact, some very major complications which can occur as well. This was an interesting survey through the ASSH membership that identified 19 cases of inadvertent median nerve harvest, four of which were during ligament reconstruction tendon interposition procedures. And these are the kind of cases that give me ulcers thinking about, especially when working with trainees. Interestingly, this evidence that the LRTI is more expensive, not better than other techniques, and carries a higher risk of complications has not guided clinical practice. In a recent survey of members of the ASSH, the treatment of choice of 68% of the 822 respondents was LRTI, even though only 35% of them felt that ligament reconstruction was extremely important, and only 14% that tendon interposition was extremely important for the successful treatment of thumb CMC arthritis. In another analysis of ambulatory surgery databases, um, looking at almost 7,000 procedures, 90% of surgeons were still performing trapeziectomy and ligament reconstruction with or without tendon interposition. And this presented review of Medicare claims from 2001 to 2010 found interestingly an increasing trend towards LRTA uh, over the same study period. So what conclusions should we draw if there's been no evidence thus far to suggest that one procedure is more efficacious than another, and we know that ligament reconstruction and interposition are not necessary for an excellent outcome? Based on the available literature, at a minimum, we know that the articulation between the thumb, metacarpal, and the trapezium must be removed, and there are a number of simple, safe techniques that can be used to achieve this. My preference is for a suture button suspension plasty. In my practice, I perform a full trapeziectomy with suspension of the thumb metacarpal using an Arthrex mini tightrope suture button device. This is a version of the hematoma distraction arthroplasty, which instead of using a K-wire to suspend the thumb metacarpal to allow that cushion of scar tissue to form in the trapeziectomy space, a fiber wire suture with two stainless steel buttons are used. And this allows immediate thumb range of motion and hand therapy to begin after the first post-operative visit, which is usually about 10 to 14 days post-op, compared to using the external K-wire, which requires removal typically at four to six weeks. In addition, uh, suture button suspension plasty avoids complications associated with K-wire use, such as pin site infection and migration, which may be expected in about five to 14% of cases respectively. 
it's not truthfully clear from the literature whether suspension is necessary after trapeziectomy, but the rationale for fixation seems logical, and most surgeons who favor it say that it should decrease first race first race subsidence and should help uh, preserve native biomechanics, thus improving patient satisfaction and functional outcomes. But truthfully, the evidence to support this is lacking. So some pearls for the tightrope. Uh, the placement of this suspension device is facilitated by first placing a guide wire. And this passage should be made with the thumb abducted as proximally on the thumb as possible and at the center of rotation of the axis of the thumb along the radial border. And the uh, passage should end in the proximal third of the index metacarpal solidly in the center of the bone, not skiving dorsally or volarly to reduce the risk of fracture and to keep the steel button from being palpable on the dorsal hand. This can be difficult for new fellows or for trainees, and let's be honest, even for experienced surgeons on some occasions. There are two methods to simplify this process. One is to place the guide wire prior to the trapeziectomy, which I prefer, or to use this targeting device. The goal is basically to preserve the native position of the thumb relative to the index finger, not so tight that the two will impinge one another. Instead of using overdrilling to pass the tightrope, as was done in this case report and resulted in a fracture, I used the tapered suture passing guide wire from the kit, which is 1.1 millimeters at its widest, and this small tapered guide wire creates smaller holes and may reduce the risk of second metacarpal fracture. With regards to the trapeziectomy, my first tip is to confirm that you are indeed removing the trapezium as there are case reports of inadvertent removal of the scaphoid instead. To simplify the excision and to get the whole trapezium out in one piece, I like to use the corkscrew found in the mini tightrope CNC set uh, to joystick the trapezium, and then I use a McGlamory metatarsal elevator, which is usually hiding in the podiatry tray, to free the bone actually quite easily. This would be a representative case, a 69-year-old gentleman uh, whose x-rays show an Eaton grade 3 CNC arthritis with advanced metacarpal joint space narrowing, sclerosis, cystic changes, and some loose uh, bodies and osteophytes. And eight months post-op from his tightrope, he has preservation of thumb motion and has been enjoying his usual hobbies, including rabbit hunting. And radiographically, you can see that his metacarpal is not impinging uh, between the index finger and the thumb, and there's preservation of the scape space above the scaphoid, um, and importantly, even the radiologist noted no pain on that image series. This study provides one of the longer published follow-up periods for the tightrope technique. With regards to outcomes, they found excellent outcomes with regard to pinch and grip strength. Looking at the operative time, several of the cases were bundled with other procedures, including cubital tunnel and joint fusions, which did result in some longer operative times. I've used this technique for about 20 patients over the past five years, and even when working with trainees, that operative time is usually at or under an hour. They found that the average metacarpal subsidence was 29%, which is comparable and in some instances superior to other series. And in practice, really, as long as the metacarpal does not subside to the level of the scaphoid and there's no concomitant Z deformity of the thumb, you should expect a good outcome. In conclusion, I think there are two points that I would like to make. One is broader, and that is that we need to stop using the LRTI as the reference standard for evaluating outcomes and treating CMC arthritis. And the second is that there are many safer faster, effective, less expensive, and lower risk procedures to treat basilar joint arthritis, including the suture button suspension plasty. And I will look forward to taking your questions in the live session and uh, showing off my little suture button. All right. Thanks, everybody.